And then the preacher said, well, if you're here and if you've just slipped your hand up, he goes, we're going to sing an invitation. We're going to sing an invitation hymn. And uh, why don't you just slip out of your seat and come on down here. And we'll have somebody take a Bible and show you from the Word of God how you can know for certain that you've got a home in heaven. And I struggled with that. It's like, that's awkward. That's, I mean, that's pretty awkward to have a bunch of people standing around and then all of a sudden you get out of your seat and walk in the, to the front. That is, that's awkward. Uh, I, I did that. And a man, and the preacher had a man take me off into a, into a side room. And I'm just telling you this, I'm, uh, rather than embarrass somebody and try to get them to come down in front, I'm just telling you what the man told me. And he says, and he asked me, right, right, I said, do you believe in God? And I said, yes, sir, I believe in God. He goes, do you believe in the God of the Bible? And I said, I, yeah, I guess I believe in the God of the Bible. And uh, he said, do you realize that that God loves you? And it's like, well, no, sir, I, uh, I guess I never really thought about that much. And so he showed me, he opened up the Bible, and he showed me John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He says, there's a God in heaven that made you and loves you and wants you to have eternal life with him. And it's like, okay, that's great news. And he goes, but there's bad news. <laughs> And the bad news is that, uh, that you're a sinner. He goes, uh, son, I would do, I, 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 are you a sinner? It's like, oh, yeah. And uh, didn't, have any, didn't have any problems there. And he goes, well, let me show you this verse. And he said, the Bible says right there, all have sinned to come short of the glory of God. And uh, he says, showed me the other verse. It said, there's none righteous, no, not one. And then he showed me Romans chapter, uh, was it 523, is it? Uh, 623, I hear. Uh, the wages of sin is death. And he said, but before you start thinking about just dying, it's not just talking about physical death. And he turned over to Revelation 21.8. And he says, now, can you read that one? And uh, he had me read it. But the fearful... The unbelieving, the abominable, murderers, whoremongers, sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. And he said, uh, he goes, I, I don't know about all those first things there, but have you ever told a lie? And I said, yes, sir. <laughs> and he said, well, how many lies do you have to tell in order to go to hell? I said, well, according to this, I only have to tell one, one lie, you're a liar. And I didn't tell him about how many other categories I already, <laughs> you know, fulfilled. And uh, so he said, well, let's turn back to that verse where it said, that, so when it's talking about death, it's not just talking about physical death, is it? And I said, no, sir. He said, it's talking about a spiritual death in a place that burns with fire and brimstone. What would you call that place? I said, well, that, that sounds like hell. And he goes, that's exactly what it is. He said, but let's go back to that verse in Romans. With the, way, the wages of sin is death. The second half of the verse is, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And he said, there's a gift that's available for you. And the gift you get through Jesus Christ. Would you like that gift? And I said, yes. And he said, the gift is not something you can earn. You don't earn a gift. A gift is given. Uh, a reward is something that you earn. And uh, he says, the way you do that is by placing your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, our Lord. And he said, would you, like to, would you like to place your faith and trust in him and become a child of God this morning? And I said, yes, sir, I would. And he said, well, then why don't you pray? And I said, well, I don't have any idea how to pray. And he said, well, why don't you pray something like this? Dear, dear Lord, I'm, I'm here and I realize that you love me and uh, that I'm a sinner. 
and that I've transgressed your law, but uh, Lord, uh, that you love me and you want me to spend eternity with you and you paid off my sin debt when you died on Calvary. And so I'm placing my faith and trust in you and asking you to save my soul. In Jesus' name, amen. And he said, now why don't you pray something like that? Well, I, you know, stumbled and stammered and the best I knew tried to, I mean, he just gave me a, a theological statement there. But I did the best I could. And it's like, Lord, I'm, I'm just praying and asking you to save me. And I realize I'm a sinner and you love me. And, and uh, please save my soul in Jesus' name. And, uh, and the Lord, and then the, the fellow showed me a couple of uh, verses of assurance. He said, you're, if you meant business, then you're a child of God. It's that simple. It's that simple. And, uh, and it just struck me. It struck me. Why? Why am I, you know, and I'm not, I wasn't into politics at all at the time. I was, I was into a, a completely different culture. Won't go into that. And it's like, why am I 27 years old in America, having gone to church all my childhood, and I've never heard the gospel? And this man just spent 10 or 15 minutes talking with me and gave it to me, plain, clear, so that I could understand it. And it changed my life. It changed my life. And, uh, and uh, <laughs> what are you saying, preacher? I'm saying if you're here today and there's people that have been here for decades and there's people that are here for the first time and it doesn't make any difference whether you're here for the first time or whether you've been here for decades, you could, be, you could have been maybe never heard the story once or maybe I've heard the story a hundred times. This is a Baptist church, a Bible-believing Baptist church, and we tell the story here over and over and over and over because of that same reason, preacher. You never know. We had a fella come in here this morning and uh, walked in at the end of Sunday school and walked out before the service began. Where's that fella going to spend eternity? And he just heard a wonderful message. From Brother Stiles, and then he just heard, and if he would have been here, he'd have heard an invitation that would change not only his life, but his eternity. But he's not here to hear it. If somebody walks in here, I am determined that as long as I'm able, they're not going to walk out of here with at least not being able to hear the gospel. I don't give the gospel like I just did here every single week, but I do give the invitation for someone to hear the gospel if they want it, and they can hear it after the service. I can take them into my office, and that offer is still good. I can show you the verses. If you're here today and you don't know for certain where you're going to spend eternity, do not walk out these doors without letting me take a Bible. Uh, if you're a woman, I can have my wife take a Bible or someone else. And uh, we can show you for certain how you can know that you've got a home in heaven. Amen? All right, with that in mind, let's all stand. And uh, stand. If you're here and you don't know where you're going to spend eternity, I'm going to give you the challenge. Why don't you just step out? And uh, I'll take a Bible, and I'll take you into my office, and I'll show you how you can know for sure you got a home in heaven. And it's the best decision you'll ever make in your life. Amen? John, go ahead. Thank you, Pastor Jim. Thank you, Brother Stiles. You heard it. It's the gospel. You need to hear it over and over and over again. with the Lord come down the altar is open here if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ come on down we'll talk with you if you have business to do with the Lord come on down the altar is open let's turn to hymn number 816 make your way down here today 816 have thine own way Lord
sing that fourth verse. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. O Lord, my being, absolute sway, fill with thy spirit till all shall see Christ only what we heard today. Take that word, keep it with you throughout the day. Uh, we'll be gathering again this evening. A reminder, we'll be gathering this evening at 6 o'clock. Come out to hear the gospel, hear the word of God as we gather to uh, have the Lord's Supper as well. And with that, I'd like to have Pastor Carpenter please close us with a word of prayer. But before we do that, thank you, Brother Gary. He's waving the collection place to me. We're going to have a second collection, okay? Brother Stiles, and listen. Ask the Lord what he'd have to give, okay? Let's be giving, okay, today and concern ourselves with those who bring the message of Jesus Christ to us. Uh, and we pray that uh, you will be a blessing to Brother Stiles. Uh, with that, uh, would you please pray over the offering for us, Brother Cliff? Father, you are good to us. Thank you, Lord. We don't deserve what you've done. Thank you, Jesus. But you love us. And Father, I pray that if there's any that have not yet received Christ as their Savior, that they'll turn to Him. That they'll open their hearts and they'll open their eyes and open their minds to the truth that Christ died for us. That He made the way possible to have our sins forgiven. And that we can have eternal life if we turn to Him and receive Him as our Savior. Ask him to forgive us. So bless this time, Father, and bless this offering. We thank you for Brother Stiles and thank you. his dear wife, Barb. And Father, we pray that you'll watch over them and continue their ministry to many churches. And many people need to hear this truth. And uh, as we try to present it here, Father, help us to be faithful. We thank you for it and pray, pray a blessing now as we give to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.